Bell's Entertainment. Now, France had terrible luck with this place, you know, because there was no silver, there was no gold, so there was no money on the territory. But the biggest problem was nobody wanted to live here. You know, between the heat and the bugs and the gators and the snakes and the yellow fever, this was not a very healthy environment. And you only had about 30% chance of the first year in Louisiana. I mean, it's, it's better now, it's about 40%. You know, it cleaned it up. But it got so bad that what they had to do is you got in trouble in France, they'd give you a choice. You could go to prison, or you could come to New Orleans. And that explains a lot about New Orleans. So by 1762, King Louis had enough and just wanted to get rid of this place. So he gave it to his cousin, King Charles of Spain. Now the Spanish called that the Plaza de Armas. They gave up on it after a while, they gave it back to France. And then King Louis sold it to, or Napoleon sold it to Thomas Jefferson as a Louisiana purchase. And, that's, and then we dedicated it to Andrew Jackson, the hero of the Battle of New Orleans in the War of 1812. And that statue, that is 30,000 pounds of bronze cast by an artist in Parkville. Statue that's not there that's anymore? That's actually the second one he made. The first one was right outside the White House in Washington, D.C. Now the church in the back of the square, that is St. Louis Cathedral. That is the oldest continuously operating cathedral in the United States. And it's the third church to stand on that spot. The first church was down in a hurricane in 1723. The second church was down in the Great Fire in 1788. I'll tell you more about that. The one you see now was built in 1794. Oh. And it was paid for by a gentleman named Don Andreas Almanester de Rojas. He's a very wealthy Spanish show. And he paid for all three of those buildings in the back of the square. And he paid for the city's first charity hospital. And since he was so generous, they buried him beneath the floor of the cathedral. I mean, after he was dead, of course. Yeah. And, you know, the cathedral is beautiful and it's open to the public, so if you get a chance, take a walk through there. It's gorgeous. And in this building here on the left, it was built in 1851 by the Baroness Mikiel Almanester from It was her father who made the cathedral. Now the Baroness, you know, it was very unusual for her time because she was up and down the ladders and the scaffolds, she was working as she wanted things done. And she was advanced to do that. You know, ladies didn't do that kind of thing in 1850, but she did such a good job. Those are still used as apartments, and there's a five-year waiting list to get in there. Now next year they're going to install indoor plumbing in there, so that waiting list will probably get even longer. <laughs> behind them, which is 
saw everywhere blind. Well, I don't. They were they were a breed though, like the uh, Spanish horses and the uh, donkeys. Yeah, the mammoth jack donkey and well, pretty much any kind of horse. You want. Any horse, yeah. So I grew up in Wyoming, and we have the uh, wild mustangs out there still. Oh yeah, horses. yeah. Now, I just want to show you guys this place. Oh shit! I, still, I still forgot the beer stop. Now, when this place was first built, this big Andrew was here for all to share. And when this was first built, it was a single family home. And the family would drive the carriage right into the courtyard. Now, that's where your front door was. And you put the front door inside for privacy, but also because the streets were nasty. You know, they were dirt. And of course, every time it rained, they'd turn into mud. And on top of that, you know, we had no sanitation system, so people were dumping their chamber pots out in the street, and they'd throw the garbage in the street. That is not what you want, you know, right outside your front door, so you put the front door in the courtyard. And today, these are apartments and condominiums, and one of these things about living in the French Quarter is you'll probably have a courtyard like this that you share with your neighbors. Like most of these buildings have some kind of courtyard. And it's a very sociable kind of thing, you really get to know your neighbors. And you see right there on the sidewalk where it says dolls for rent? Well, up until the 1950s, we still kept mules in the courtyards here in the French Quarter. 1950s, we were still using the haul ice and produce, deliver milk, haul garbage, because anything you can do with a truck, you can do with a mule. You can't be in a big hurry if you're driving. You don't have to run out of gas. <laughs> Alright, he'll make gas all night, this guy. stands for brotherhood, the blue stands for liberty, and the white stands for purity of government. Now, in Orleans, that's kind of a joke, because our former mayor's in prison right now. <laughs> so is our neighboring uh, states. Up there in Illinois? We live in Indiana, but yeah, they have Illinois people, they're corrupt, so. Well, we, have, we had a governor who just got out of prison. Now, this is very special here. Now, this is the old Ursuline's convent. I mentioned the fire, 1788. What happened was a gentleman named Don Vincente Nunez was burning some candles in his office and wanted to get some fresh air. Well, he opened the windows, but he had forgotten to tie down the curtains. And, you know, it always kind of breezed that. the candles started to Now, you know, on any other day, what they do, since they had a real fire department, was they'd ring the church bells. And all the townspeople would drop whatever it was they were doing. If you grab a bucket, they put out the fire. That was just fine. The only problem was this fire started on Good Friday. It was March 21st, 1788. You are not allowed to the bells on Good Friday. In fact, you're actually wrapped in cloth and tied down a rope. The priest refused to ring them. So without the church bells, nobody knew there was a fire until a really good head start. 856 buildings, including the church, burned to the ground in five hours. But you know what? The old convent survived, mainly because of the slate roof. Because you know, back then, most people used wood shingles. And those don't do you much good in fire. But the convent survived, so today, that is one of the last original French structures in New Orleans. It is the very oldest building in New Orleans, and it's the oldest building in the entire Mississippi Valley, here like Lake Itasca way up north of Minnesota where the river starts. They began construction in 1745 and it's finished in 1752. First, you know, we had to move the nuns out though. They know, there's no nuns there anymore? No. They're sitting up to Bourbon Street and getting nice to have it. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, so they'd probably be out here blessing everybody. John. But it is made to have that church and museum and archival center. And you can tour this place. This is the former home of General Pierre Gustave Toutain Beauregard. He fired Beauregard. the first shot of the Civil War on April 12, 1861. And you know, it's a great example of an antebellum home. 
And it's got the Greek columns and you know the above ground basement because you know you can't have a basement in the lawn. Yeah. You just end up in the north swimming pool. And you know it's got that nice iron across the front. You see how there's a staircase on each side of the house? Now that was important. Because you know they were a lot more formal about things. And if it tells them, you know, they can the ankles, they're going upstairs. Oh, wow, that would be a big scandal. And you'd be engaged, just like that. So to avoid that, they built the houses with two staircases. So they'd be, yeah. they should be married to that girl so yeah, yeah, John always went left, and the ladies always went up the right. I started the myth of ladies always right. That's right. The myth. The, the myth. myth. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're asking me how, about how much it costs to live down here? Yeah. Like these little buildings right here? Those are the Latana House apartment. They were built in 1844. During the Civil War, they used a military battle. So they used an army while they occupied New Orleans. But if you look at the mailboxes, there's 10 apartments in front of the building. They're not real big. They're about 350 to 400 square feet. And they rent for about $1,000 a month. That's about how much. That was the home of Kingsway Recording Studios. And I drew Bob Dylan before the album Oh Mercy in 1989. A lot of local musicians recorded here. And in 2002, Nicholas Cage bought this place as a wedding present for Lisa Grace Preston, and they got married. Oh, oh. Of course, you know, that marriage didn't work out real well. You know, that only lasted about six weeks. <laughs> So today, this belongs to a real estate developer. I'll tell you a little story about him. A couple summers ago, my wife and I were out for a walk, and the front doors of this mansion were open. So, you know, naturally, we were peeking inside out of curiosity, and the owner came home. Now, you know, most people aren't real happy if they come home and find strangers peeking in the front door. But he didn't seem to mind too much, but he invited us in for a glass of champagne and gave us a tour of the house. And it's pretty, it is spectacular. You know, marble floors and gold fixtures. And right inside the front door is a crystal chandelier that's 16 feet tall and weighs 2,200 pounds. It's made of power. There's only one other like it in the world. And the other one's at my house. Okay. <laughs> now, we just turned on the Esplanade Avenue, and this is the very end of the French Quarter. This is the border between the French Quarter and the Marigny district here on the right. That's nice name for Philippe Marigny. That was his sugar cane plantation. That was all sugar cane. Now, when old Philippe passed away, he left the plantation to his son Bernard. And Bernard grew up to be an interesting man. He was a legislator. He came from the Louisiana Constitution. He founded the city of Mandeville, North Shore Lake Pontchartrain. But he was only about 15 years old when he inherited all this, so they sent him off to Europe to get an education, learn how to run the business. Well, while he was there, he also learned how to play the game Kupo, what we call craps today. But he didn't learn very well because he came home and he gambled away the entire plantation. And that became known as the Fauberg marriage. Fauberg is a French word for suburb. That was the first suburb of North. That was a separate city up until 1852. People live in these houses, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, my. 
Now, most of these are originally single family homes, but they've been converted into apartments. And this place here, peek in the windows as we go by. This is built in 1835 by a sea captain named William Watt. And over the years, that was used in a lot of movies, like The Vampire, the Empire, All the Secrets of Man, The Great Space Adventure of the Bus. And it was actually in pretty terrible shape until a few years ago, when it was restored by a movie producer. They put in screening rooms and you know, apartments for film crews, because Louisiana is the third largest state in the Union for film production. We got California, New York, and Louisiana, they call it Hollywood South. Yeah, that's why I had to turn the corner if you want to check out the chandelier later on. <laughs> And if you believe that, I've got a racehorse for sale up front here too. But. We'd rather buy a mule. <laughs> now that's a Creole plantation home. That one was built in 1844 for the family of W.C.C. Claiborne. He was the first American governor of the Louisiana Territory. Rainwater and cisterns. Now, that was fine, but the problem with cisterns was they were breeding grounds for mosquitoes. And you know, this gave us a lot of problems with the yellow fever. And in 1853, we had a really bad epidemic that killed 10,000 people in three months. And you know, they were just piling the bodies up on the sidewalk. Then what would happen is the church would come by with a wagon, they'd load the bodies up. They'd haul them off to what is known as the Mortuary Chapel on Basin Street. That is now the Our Lady of Guadalupe Church. And that little church was built in 1826 just for the victims of yellow fever because they didn't know if the virus were contagious or not. So no, you don't want to drag them to the middle of town and into the cathedral. You want to get them out of town. And in those days, out of town just meant two blocks that way. Everything ended right there. So they built the Mortuary Chapel on the other side of Rampart Street. So you get the bodies out of town, give them a quick service at the chapel, and they rush them out the back door and into St. Louis Cemetery. And they had to rush because they were doing hundreds of funerals a day. And people were dying to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> You see how nice and quiet it is back here? Oh, yeah. yeah. This is one of my favorite parts of the quarter. I always like bringing people back. Usually, you know, when you say French quarter, the first thing people think of is Bourbon Street and all the craziness. You know, they don't realize the French quarter is my favorite. I love the quarter. I love it. What about like the 
Yeah, see, that's what we call a side haul shotgun. You see somebody the hallway runs all the way down the side of the yeah. That's beautiful. Then here you've got a double shotgun. That's basically two houses under one roof. And here you've got your single shotgun. Now, you know, a shotgun like this has no hallway. Now you got your sitting in the rear parlor up front. That's where you do your entertainment. That opens up right onto your bedroom. If you're really lucky, you know, you might have one or two bedrooms on that. And your bathroom and kitchen are way on the very back of the house. So you can be strolling back and forth in your bedrooms. So you can get a lot of privacy. But these are popular for a couple of reasons. First, you're taxed by the width of your house. So that hallway, you build it now or you save money on taxes. And it was a great way to cool the house because you just open the front door, you open the back door, you get a really nice breeze circulating through. You can cool the whole place off. And you never had to sweep. Everything blew out the door. Right? Great. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> but you see how this is painful. They do have to keep wasps and spiders and mud daubers and building nests there. Because they see that light blue, they think it's the sky because someone else to build their house. They did the same thing on that little fuel cottage right there. Oh, it does work. What about them wood burn bar bees? You got them down there? No, I don't have those. They, that's one thing we don't want. They, uh, where we live, they bore a perfect three-eighths hole in a really? piece of wood. Oh, and see how white tower down there? That's the old Hibernia Bank building. That was built in 1952 and up until 1967. That was the tallest building. And ships going up and down the Mississippi River used to use that to navigate by. So all these grates on the ground, are they like tunnels under the city? Or? Yeah, those are for um, utility access. Oh. The, the French Quarter is the only neighborhood in, in New Orleans that has underground utilities. Oh, so I didn't pay attention that there was no... Yeah, there's nothing overhead. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, you did that back in the 60s. Spikes in those poles? Oh, yeah. Those are known as Romeo catchers. Oh, those oh. are meant to discourage young men of the city from calling on young ladies of the house after hours. Nick? Yeah, you might call them <laughs> Romeo, like, but if you, if you slip, you're going to be a Juliet. <laughs> and then here on the left, right here, this gallery comes here. Elvis Presley sat, and he sang the song Crawfish in the movie King Creole in 1958. Old Elvis sat right there. That is so cool. I would never have thought about that. that. That's a creative dad right there. He's like, nah, he ain't coming up here to the pub. And here on the right, that's our school in the French Quarter. Shotgun Public School number 15. They call it number 15 because at one time we had 42 schools named for Oh, wow. And they did that because he's a very wealthy slave owner, a plantation owner. But when he bought or when he buy a slave, he'd educate him, he'd teach him a trade, he'd allow them to take off and side jobs. And at the end of 10 years, he allowed them their freedom. It's known as manumission. Now, when he passed away in 1852, he died very wealthy. He made a fortune in indigo and sugar cane. And in his will, he left his fortune to the city of New Orleans for the sole purpose of creating a public school system. one of the first... Hey, 
here on the right, now this is the old Forest Dog Fitz. Uh, this is built in 1837 by our district judge, so we're parking. This is his private residence. Now, Judge Walker was a bachelor when he built this one. And when he got done, he figured it would be a good time to get married and settle down. Well, he fell in love with a beautiful lady from Iowa. Yeah, they courted for a while, but when he proposed, she wanted to make sure he was sincere. She said, I'll marry you, build me a castle. So you know what he did? Yeah, he built that addition on the left side. <laughs> so yeah, she saw that and said, yeah, it looks like a castle. Close enough, anyway. So they got married and everything's fine, but she got kind of homesick after a while. Well, Judge thought to himself, how do I make her feel more at home here in New Orleans? I know, they grow lots of corn in Iowa. So he designed that fence just for her. And he has her economy in Philadelphia and shipped all the way down here by, by steamship, in fact. So she could feel like she's learned the cornfields at home and her shipped out her front windows. And it worked. They had a very long and happy marriage after that. Aww. That's also one of the first cases of what we call high maintenance today. <laughs> Uh, Tell me about it. <laughs> wow. Yeah, time. No, I'm really time ring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. well, you're on a snack somewhere. And guys, have you checked out the art galleries here on Royal Street? They're really nice artwork on them. Really interesting artwork. A lot of the artists that you see in the galleries here got their start by hanging their artwork on the fence. You probably saw them out here today. Now, you know, back in the old days, New Orleans was home to a lot of pirates. Fucking here. You know, guys like John Lafitte, Dominique Joe, Carol Lafitte. Now, what they do is when they come back on a voyage, they would sell their stolen goods by hanging them on the fence. And that is where the term fencing stolen goods originated. I don't know if we have any cigar smokers here, but the best cigar shop in the French Quarter, right there. had been signed, and the Americans turned that into a courthouse instead. And today it's a Mardi Gras museum upstairs and the Katrina museum downstairs. And if you guys like history and museums, on the other side of the cathedral is the old Cabildo, the old Spanish city hall. And that's where the Louisiana purchase was ratified. a lot of the balconies, oh I'm sorry, That's a lot of the balconies and galleries are decorated with flowers. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't like just for decoration. Because, you know, we talked about how nasty the streets were. Like, you know, yeah. Well, you know, people would sleep out there during the summer. And you can imagine, when it got hot, those streets had kind of cooked and simmer and they could percolate. They get pretty fragrant. So to cover the smell of the streets, they were just lying the balconies with flowers.
Then here on the left, now this is two jack stretch box. Very nice traditional Creole dining. You're yeah, not some kind of <coughs> place you can go if you're in a hurry. You know, you're gonna be there for a couple hours. And when you're there at night, you don't have a menu. You don't have dinner that night. Yeah, you got two choices. Take it or leave it. You know. But that is the second oldest restaurant in New Orleans. They've been there since 1856. And they still have the original chef. He's very good. He really is. I bet he is. We've got the lower but now we're closer. Take a really good look at the ironwork. You can see the Barnes' initials in the pattern. Oh yeah. There's an A for Alma Nestor, her maiden name. And if you put Dalva, her married name. Now, in those days, they did a lot of arranged marriages. You know, you're married for money, you're married for land, my dad chose for you. That's what this was, but it is a very unhappy marriage, and it got so bad that one day the Baroness's father-in-law, who wanted his son to inherit the Baroness's fortune, had a little too much wine, pulled out a pistol, and shot the Baroness in the chest. Not once, not even twice, but three times. And when he got done with her, he turned the gun on himself. Well, the Baroness had the last laugh, but she was a tough old girl, and she survived. Now, she carried those bullets in her chest for the rest of her life. She always short a couple of fingers, but you know, other than that, she's pretty much okay. <laughs> and when she was well enough to travel again, she returned here to New Orleans, built her apartment buildings, and when she got done with that, she designed Jackson Square, pretty much the way you see it now. She was an amazing young lady. Guys, I hope y'all enjoyed that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Stand by and mommy take your picture. Well, just stand back here in the where it's dry. No worry, he doesn't mind doing it. He doesn't mind doing it. He's a little shy. You have your phone.